I'm Jason Brown. I'm Jimmy T. And this is Laughing Parrot's review of Skippable News. <laughs> Not and KSRW news, and Sierra where you Ways. can skip the parts you want in the menu in the description below or along the progress bar. Watching at home on Optimum Channel 3, we appreciate you watching, but you can't skip unless you use Betamax or VHS or Hold Kibo those, or those three something like that. And DVR. There was actually a tape before Betamax that was a big one, and we had a client that has reached out to us to modernize his documentary that he shot in the 1970s, and we had a player out of four players, one of them worked upstairs. It was like a time capsule. It was a time capsule. And it worked. And to watch, it looks great, too. Yeah. I mean, that tape captured, it. you could tell the difference between the equipment. Yes. But other than that, it was I mean, far superior yeah. than VHS. Yes, and it's not as good as digital. But anyway, we're working on that. We really are, and uh, no joke. We've got a great episode lined up for you. We've got some people talking about some things, and some other people talking about some other things, and then these people talking about those things to educate you about some of these things, and some of them to entertain you about other things, and some to get at your heartstrings because they've got little doggies in there. That was profound. I know. I just, I just, I just wanted to be wow. very, very deep so that our audience understands how deep. great this episode is. Deep. What Piled, do you think? How deeply. Have you been this enjoying is, the new format? Absolutely. I've been enjoying and the, the new format. interviews this week are just outstanding. Watch? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm just playing. <laughs> the it's interviews kind of, this week are outstanding. And the, like you said, the furry friend, and uh, it's just all the way around. Yeah. We've got stuff in the can coming for next week. It'll be great also. You know, it, this studio has really come alive. It has been exciting to see every office filled and everybody working. Oh, and by the way, Byron Walter, who we introduced to you many, 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 many months ago, is returning today, uh, Friday, and uh, he's going to be heading up the commercial division of Laughing Productions. We've got a lot of cool commercials coming out, so we can't wait for you to see at Bishop Twin Theater when they hit. Uh, anything else? I want to give for a plug for Saturday morning behind the City Hall. Yes. May bicycle 11th. safety rodeo. Bicycle rodeo. Yeah. Many groups coming together to make that possible. Highway Thank Patrol, you to all Sheriff, the Police, Bishop, Police, Fire Department. you name it. Fire Department. It's but great. There'll be helmet fitting, which is extremely important. A bad helmet is just almost it's as bad as no not helmet. Not happened at all. But did I be it did not die. Let's roll film. Okay, well, thank you for Wave Media, Laughing Parrot Productions, whoever the heck we are today. And I'm with Jordan Rose, and we know who he's with. He's with Eastside Student Center. And Jordan, before we get into what you have here, would you give us a wrap up on the prom? Yes. Um, adult prom was April 20th. Uh, we threw it at the fairgrounds, um, and it was a great success. We had over 200 people show up, probably yeah. closer to 250. Wow. Um, which, you know, the Thursday before, we had only sold like 30 tickets. So wow. we were a little nervous, but a bunch of people showed up at the end, bought tickets at the last minute. Um, tons of people, lots of dancing, um, great food from Cloud Ripper, from Dennis. Um, and then we got a bunch of um, donations from like Mammoth Brewing, cool. Jim Lake Brewing, Joe at Mountain Rambler, um, Shelter Distilling up in up in Mammoth, okay. and distant. So we all the alcohol was donated to us, so we were able to have like a free open bar, and it was super fun. How'd the music go? The music was great. DJ was awesome. People out there dancing. People were dancing. It took a while, you know. Yeah, you know, well, it always is. So of, it was just like high school. Yeah, it was exactly like high school. <laughs> a couple wallflowers sitting on the side. Yeah, um, yeah. But okay. it was really good. Lots of lots of people turned out. Everyone I've talked to. Had a great time. Yeah, so. I saw pictures posted all yeah. over Facebook of people in their prom pictures. Yeah, and I was fun. like, that's cool. Yeah, people got into it for sure. That's it was definitely awesome. like a unique, different event that we don't have in Bishop. So, and so that was the first one. That was uh, the first based one. Based on the success, are you going to do it again next year? Yes. Okay. If you had asked me, you know, the day before, I would have said absolutely not. But really? You sold was, that many tickets at the last Well, minute. yeah, and it was just, you know, everything's easier the second time you do it. So right. planning, and oh, yeah. prepping, all that stuff was super stressful. But now that we've done it, 
we know what to expect. So yeah, we'll for sure do it next year. Besides this event, let's talk about what's going on. Not let's not talk about this yet. But how's East Side uh, Student Center going? Uh, I know you have Georgia. She yeah. oh, she couldn't do her show because you had her work. I have a bone to pick uh, with you later. Uh, oh, on Wednesday? That was <laughs> yeah. that was probably busy. That was me. Um, student Center's doing great. We have a ton of kids showing up. We're averaging you know between thirty and forty kids a day. Awesome. Um, fifth through eighth grade. Wow. Um, it's great. The space is really crowded and loud but in a good way okay um kids are you know middle schoolers so they do stuff they shouldn't but for the most part everyone's well behaved and having fun and yeah our staff is super awesome so i was teasing before we we started the show i said you guys need to set up a place out back so the middle schoolers could have uh, cage fighting and work out their aggressions yeah. but that would not be good so the new patios yeah the new, that's what the new patios for uh tell us uh tell us what's going to happen in the summer because i remember you told us yeah. before but let's let's let people know you, you you're going to continue through the summer yeah so we're going to be open all of june so last day of school is june 7th or something okay. like that um, and then we'll be closed on the weekends. We'll be open every day of the week till okay. June 28th. And we'll okay. be open all day from 8.30 to 5.30 for the students that are currently enrolled. So current fifth through eighth grade students. So enrolled. Did, so I did not know. Did they have to sign up? They just have to fill out a waiver. Oh, they yeah. have to fill out a waiver. Yeah, we don't have a wait list. So right. it's, okay. it's drop-in. So you know, okay. some kids show up every day. Some kids show up once a month. So. Okay. All right. Um, and then if, uh, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. And then we'll be closed July. And then we'll reopen like that first Monday in August. Okay to the next year's cohort so okay the, so this year's fourth grade students will then be in fifth grade and so parents so good we'll, luck through july yeah good luck. you're on your own <laughs> we're out we gotta take what, a break uh anything new and exciting besides this um with the oh wait didn't you talk about a high school program that you might be introducing yeah so we are we are in How's the works going? of uh expanding um, through high school. So we're still trying to figure out space and funding, mm -hmm. but it's looking promising. Um, so it would be at a different location? It, we would have two locations. Yeah, because yeah. like you said, you've already yeah. maxed out. The I mean, space. we're already maxed out with what we have okay. in a space. So we are, um, you know, currently looking for a new space. We have a couple good leads, um, but yeah. I, it seems very likely that it'll happen. It what? might be like a combo um, middle high school. Okay. Uh, we're still trying to work out all the details, but okay. I'll have a I'll have a for sure update next time. All right, that'll be that. wonderful. So, yeah. What would they? What, what would they? What would you? Uh, what's your planning of activities for high schoolers and stuff? Yeah, high school because they're like this all the time. I know. Well, and my, I met with the BHS Student Senate. Okay. Um, a couple weeks ago, who was Georgia's? I think the chair. <laughs> yeah, she does probably. Everything. She's in um, everything. And Karen Karen Rivas. Um, so they're really interested in opening a high school space. And okay. what they were talking about is just a place for kids to come after school and hang out, do homework, have a couple games, like, you know, pool, ping pong. Oh, yeah. Um, stuff for kids to do, stay out of trouble, maybe a little, awesome. a little cafe, coffee area would be cool. Uh, okay. Some outdoor space. It's so it'll probably just gathering. be like a chill yeah. hangout space. Safe space. Yeah. We'll have, we'll have it staffed, but it won't be like a... Our, our thing is... We want kids to show up. So if we make it a tutoring center and it feels like they're in school, right? You don't want that up. vibe. We don't want that vibe. You want so that, we'll help with homework. You want that coffee shop yeah. feel to them. We're happy to help out. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, so. air hockey table. Yeah, exactly. We have a mini air hockey table, but it's, yeah, it's no, I'm trashed. talking big yeah, one big. for the high school for sure. Yeah. So tell us about this open house. Yeah, so we have a we have an open house coming up May 18th. Uh, that's a Saturday. Um, not this coming one, but the following from 9 to 11. And we're basically just going to open up our space. There's a bunch of families that have kids there that have only seen it during the, the mass chaos of right. tons of kids. So um, just a chance for community members, families, um, people that have supported us in the past to come check out the space. We um, ha are just finishing up our kitchen update. So we have this cool little kitchen area yeah. um, where the baking club hangs out and we do cooking classes within your county. All kinds of stuff back there. What um, kind of baked treats are we looking forward to? That's here? a good question. They're, the baking club is still working on the menu. Okay. So it's going right. to be good, though. Well, I do want to give a shout out to um, Indie Coffee Roasters Gunner. Thank yeah. you for providing Thanks, the coffee Gunner. for that. 
Yep. Uh, looking forward to the uh, treats from the Baking Club. And then we want to thank uh, also here on the flyer, it's got City of Bishop, Rotary Club of Bishop, Sunrise uh, Club of Bishop, and then Altrusa uh, leading uh, to a better community, International Eastern Sierra, California. Um, Got to give the shout yeah. out to those people. Those are like our three main sponsors for the, the kitchen and the patio project. So we also awesome. put a little patio into the alley, which is really nice outdoor space. Yeah, I saw that. You can only go one way now. Yeah, you can go one which way. Which is in the really alley. cool. Yeah. I'm glad that they uh, approved that yeah. for you guys yeah, to do. Uh, so that's been really nice. Jordan, we look forward to having you back in June. Yeah. I'll Telling back. us about how this went. Yeah. Uh, what we could look forward to. And then, like you said, maybe we'll have a, yeah. an update on the high school. Should have an update on high school. Sounds so. good. Any yeah. last parting words you want to share with the five viewers out there right now? Just uh, kidding. We have more than five viewers. Uh, no, but Student Center is doing great. Thanks for all your support. If you've supported us in the past, um, and can, they can still donate. Yeah, we, we go always, to their website. Yeah, we got. What's we the have website a donate again? Page, EastsideStudentCenter.org. Okay. There's a big donate button all over the place. So. Yeah. yeah. Donate. It's a good yeah, cause to get cause. behind. That'd be great. And uh, we look forward to uh, maybe one day being able to partner with you to get some of those kids over here on the radio. Sure. Still got to do that. We'll do it. It might be because you guys are so busy with stuff. We yeah. might have to look at the fall. Yeah. But that'll be a fun project sure. yeah all right thanks, well Jason. thanks for tuning in thanks Jordan for coming yeah thanks hi I'm Matthew Goyke I'm a transportation engineer with Caltrans in Bishop California we're always looking for individuals to join our engineering team we have multiple positions open for multiple levels of education you can access these opportunities at the Cal careers website it's Cal careers all one word dot ca dot g o v and again Matthew Goyke I'm Brianna Guico, Assistant Director at the Mammoth Lakes Chamber of Commerce, and today I'm sitting down with Mary Toomey, the Volunteer Program Coordinator for Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra. Thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat about everything we have going on this summer. Yeah, what? so a lot of people and a lot of us know that DSES's activities in the winter, but what do you guys have going on in the summer? Yeah, so in the summer we actually have a myriad of activities. Pretty much anything you can think of doing in the Eastern Sierra in the summer, we can offer from an adaptive perspective. So that includes mountain biking, paddle boarding, kayaking, hiking, even rock climbing. Wow. Really anything that you and the family want to get up and do, you can bring along someone with disabilities. Awesome. And then what is the kind of area that you span? I assume you're not just in Mammoth Lake. So what's kind of the, the service area? Yeah, great question. So in the summertime, we actually service a wider area than we are able to in the winter as well. So we have a property out at June Lake and a facility there to be able to cater to our paddle boarding and kayaking mostly. Um, and then we do things on Mammoth Mountain, the mountain biking primarily, excuse me. Uh, and then throughout the town, we utilize some of the town paths to do our road biking, some mm -hmm. of our hiking. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we do most things. Mm -hmm. So it's really encompassing the Eastern Sierra, I'd say. Great, and when when, are, when do things kind of get started? I know we're, we're shifting seasons here now, so when do you get started? Yeah, so we start up trainings for all of our staff and volunteers early June, and then we have our first day of lessons June 17th. Um, and we run throughout the summertime pretty much until the Eastern Sierra says no more. Right. Yep. Yeah. Which, depending on the year, you know, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. Yeah. So, yeah. And so what does the program need help with right now? What's what's the kind of the what do you guys need? We need volunteers. OK. So we have a large volunteer base in the winter and we're so thankful for it. But most of those folks go back to their nice, warm, sunny places in the summertime. So we're really asking for some summer volunteers, anyone that's interested in biking, paddle boarding, uh, anything like that, as well as people that like managing events and mm. working with our office staff. Uh, we have a wide range of availabilities in volunteering uh, and we would take anyone and everyone that wants to come. Awesome, great. And so how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, so people can email me directly. Mm -hmm. uh, my email is just mtoomey at disabledsportseasternsierra.org. It is long. But <laughs> <laughs> Once you add it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or they can look on our website. Uh, we have a volunteer page. We have new volunteer information. Um, or they can call our office. So we're, we're located on Mammoth Mountain. Yes. Um, and our phone number is 760-934-0791.
Wonderful. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing a little bit about what you guys have going on. Anything else or just summer activities? Summer is coming and it's so beautiful here. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. would love to have everyone join us for the summertime. So thank you again for the opportunity to chat about it. And Absolutely. we're looking forward to the warmer weather. Of Us too. <laughs> yes. I'm Brianna Guayco again from the Mammoth Lakes Chamber of Commerce, joined here with Mary Toomey from Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra. Together, we're growing business and building community. Why choose us? Because our success is determined by your success. Our job is to promote you. With our combined success, we foster in after-school programs, teaching, broadcasting, writing, TV, and film. We help each other and teach future generations. Call us at 760-914-9883, extension 2. This is Jimmy T with Ion Inyo, the amazing Donna Bird, Donna Bird, Donna Bird, and Mule Days. How many days left? Only 13, 13 days. days. So what do we need to do right now? We need to go buy tickets. Because yep, you all, you have 13 days to buy your tickets. And well, tickets will be available during the event also, but for the best seats in the house and for the concert and the grandstand, I suggest you get them now. And where do we get those? You can go online, muledays.org, or you can call the office 760-872 four two six three give us a call we'll take your order over the phone if you do it online there's a very good chance we'll be calling you anyway to see if you we need special accommodations for seating in the grandstands absolutely now we actually have a shout out we want to thank someone this week we do so set on saturday a great group of young men and their coaches and parents showed up at the, the fairgrounds and spent six hours constructing all of the corrals and stalls for the contestants. And so I would like to say a huge thank you to both the Mammoth High School football team and their coach, uh, Dale Knott, and the Bishop High School football team and their co coach, Arnie Palu. Now, the pins are not light. They are quite heavy, as a matter of fact. And I helped assemble them many years ago. I said, don't call me. Yeah, I know. I know. I, know. I, I, I called and you didn't answer. I know. Yes. I straight to voicemail. But <laughs> seriously, those guys, they did a lot of work. It's not easy. So a big salute to you guys. And it's also, you're looking for volunteers, like always. Always looking for volunteers. Always looking for people who want to come and join the Mule Days family because, I mean... Look at what the football players did in a day and the, the impact that they have and being a part of the community. And just, again, I, I know I said it, but I can't say it enough. What a wonderful group of young men and their, their handlers. Um, anyway, so yeah, volunteers always need volunteers. Some of the key places we need them right now are with it only being 13 days until the event, we have massive stacks of paper, flyers, information that needs to be stuffed into envelopes for the RV packets. It is not strenuous labor. You can come in a nice air conditioned office and, and visit with everybody while you work, but it's just a matter of constructing RV packets. It's a, a simple job, but it's very important because that's all the safety equipment for, or all the information, yeah. excuse me, for the RVers. And you don't have to come from a long line, line of envelope suppers. It can teach you on the job, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a skill you could pick up just like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, another thing, you volunteers, you're looking for servers. We are. So if you've ever been a volunteer at Mule Days, you know that we serve you lunch to say thank you for your hard work. We serve lunch every day from Tuesday through the end of the event Sunday. And that doesn't just magically happen. Now we have the lunches catered. You don't have to cook, but we need people to help set up the, the buffet line and to clean up. And also 
Saturday the 18th, we have what we call our volunteer gathering. And it's where people who have volunteered or are going to come together on the fairgrounds in the Charles Brown Auditorium. And you meet with your chairman and you sign your liability release and you get your free magazine and you so anyway we have a wonderful lady Mary Jane who puts out this big spread of food and she needs some help she's a lovely lovely lady and it's fun to work with but she needs some help getting it ready because it's you know there's a couple hundred people that will be there and so it's a bit of an undertaking it's actually worth volunteering to go to the gathering. That's just a hoot. And they'll be, we're going to have drawings for prizes because we always do that. And so it is. It's fun. It's, it's a family reunion. And that's where you get your belt buckle, right? You can purchase your belt buckle at cost. We used to be able to give them away for free, but... Um, price of everything. Yeah, the, with the price of everything. And Montana Silversmith still gives us a good deal on everything but it just um, got to be too financially burdensome to give away that many so you can purchase them at our cost <laughs> and also you talked about also we need barricade i'm trying to remember how to say it in french but i can't translate it because it's naughty but you need barricade <laughs> uh, people for the for the mule day parade <laughs> we could use a few people so as you know we block off the entire main street and we have a, a good road detour crew. But if you've ever tried to get around the on main street, you know, circumvent the parade, which I don't recommend, just stop and enjoy the parade and, and have a good time and then scurry on to what you need to do. But sometimes people do try to circumvent the, the, the barricades and so at certain locations, we just have a couple people stand there and just say, hey, you know, just, no, you can't, please, please just wait. So it, here again, not a strenuous job, but an important job. Now again, how do people volunteer? People can volunteer by checking in with us at the office on Main Street, 1141 North Main. You can give us a call, 760-872-4263. Or there's a spot on our website where you can uh, reach out with questions and that comes to my desk and I will forward it to the appropriate department. Awesome. So tickets, volunteers, thanks to Mammoth and uh, Bishop High Schools. Yes. And amazing Donna Bird. <laughs> this is Jimmy T with Ion Inyo. Donna Bird, thank you for coming again. Thanks for having me again. 13 days. Get those tickets. <laughs>
Yes, he did get picked on and that made him quite shy and kind of standoffish with other dogs. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, he's, he's still a great dog. Has Butters been to Animal uh, Human Academy yet? I do not think so. Um, the kids have not worked with him, but uh, we have a great group of volunteers that, I mean, he gets three or four walks a day, so, and out, out in the play yard, um, I've been told that out in the big play yard, he loves the kiddie pool, so that's always fun. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a good boy. And how would, for the forever home, how would someone call and say, I want butters? Of course, come on down and meet him. Make sure it's a good fit. Um, if you want to give us a call, it's 760-938-2715. Um, we do have applications on the county website if you want to fill out an application. Uh, we do yard checks. If you do have other dogs, um, always suggest to bring them down, do a meet and greet, make sure that they're going to get along. But again, I think Butter's best would be just kind of an only dog home, um, only pet home. And, but, and what is your website? Um, it's inyocounty.us. So if you go on there, it can, you know, you can do payments online, you can do the application online. Um, that way it just kind of saves an extra trip basically down to the shelter so we can do the yard check, make sure everything's good, and go from there. So Butters is good at gophers? I bet you Butters would be great for um, rodent control, for sure. <laughs> He's definitely quick on his feet. Yeah, and, and probably with a school, he'd be outstanding. He's amazing right now. He is. He really is. He's a super wants-to-please-everyone kind of dog. Cool. So this is Jimmy T with Officer Sandra McVitie and the amazing Butters. He's ready right now to go home with you. Which, he is. He is neutered. He's had his rabies. He's had his vaccinations. He is ready to go. And he's had some snacks. Yes. Cool. Thanks we'll very much. We'll work for food. <laughs> we'll work for food. We'll love you for food. Stay tuned. Huh. You're so funny. You're just so... Oh. Hello. This is Fred Ru from Sarah Brighton bringing you this week's Fred's Friday Fish Finds. Okay, we did really good with last week's, kind of called it right. What are we going to do this week? Well, I'm kind of torn. Do I go with Hot Creek or do I go with the Upper Owens? Well, I think we're going to do the Upper Owens because I think by the weekend, the Trophy Cutthroat Trout are going to be in big enough numbers that everybody can get up there and catch some. So that's my pick for this week's Friday Fish Finds. This has been Fred Rope from Sarah Bright Dot. Hi there, I'm Pastor Tim Homan from the Pastor's Roundtable and from Grace Lutheran Church and Bishop and Mammoth Lakes Lutheran Church with a message for you entitled, The Shy One. The Holy Spirit will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. This comes to us from John chapter 16. Perhaps the shyest member of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. However, don't mistake the word shy for ineffective or weak. The Holy Spirit seeks to convince you of three important truths. He seeks to convince you about sin, righteousness, and judgment. And so when you lower your eyes while confessing that you are a poor, miserable sinner in thought, word, and deed, you do so only because the Holy Spirit has given you that gift, that gift of repentance, the ability to recognize that you are a sinner who sins. When you're pointed away from your failed righteousness, and you hear about Jesus' righteousness on your behalf, the Holy Spirit's at work again, giving you faith to see Jesus. And when you rest in the news that Jesus has conquered the devil, that the ruler of this world has defeated and judged through Jesus' saving work, the Holy Spirit has given you that comfort of the Lord's great judgment and victory. The Holy Spirit is shy, not because he's unsuccessful, but because he points away from himself and the realities of sin, the righteousness of Jesus, and the victory over the devil. I'm Pastor Tim Homan from the Pastor's Roundtable. Okay, well thank you for watching this episode. Before we leave, we're gonna go out with what's new at Bishop Twin Theater, and you really should head out to bishoptwintheater.com and watch our review of Planet of the Apes. <laughs>
Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Noah, you chose a human over a witness. I must save my family. We'll have to move fast. Hold on! Together, you will die. Together, strong. Quite an adventure, isn't it? Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, rated PG-13. Do I make out? I could slap the shit out of you. I really could. And I'm open to that.